this is officially episode 5 of how to design a 4x4 because I'm physically going to work on the same model although everything I'm going to say in this video is probably going to apply generally to most puzzles anyway. So yeah, one of the things I'm going to talk about is like how do you add slots for magnets so I'm just going to hide one part first and yeah, in the interest of time I'm not going to do every single part I'm just going to show an example for one part so for example here let's say I want to add a slot for magnet I would just there's two ways to go about doing this the first is I can like just physically draw a hole like uh, assuming a three millimeter magnet I'm going to make it slightly bigger than the actual magnet itself so let's say 3.2 the thickness of the magnet let's say it's two millimeters so once again I make it slightly bigger because I don't want to accidentally make it slightly shallower and make the magnet like stick out of the mechanism so I'll make the depth a bit more like 2.2 for example and of course I need to select remove this is just a typical cut extrude and then yeah I just save this command the other way is to slide in the magnet from the side so for example you want you want to put your 3 by 2 millimeter magnet here you can actually just draw a hole on the side and just punch it in like that let's make it eight and yeah this will be a magnet that's somewhere here next uh the other topic i want to talk about here is 3d printing which is like basically the main barrier turning like standing between your 3d model and actually having a product in your hand and there are many different types of 3d printing but uh, based on experience i've only done two so i'm going to talk about these two the first one is sls printing so what sls printing is uh basically is is imagine you have an entire bed or big a huge tank full of powder and then you have a laser on top it zaps the powder together and causes some reaction to fuse a bit of powder together and that is your first layer then the whole bed is lowered a little bit and then the laser zaps another bit of powder on top and then the whole thing is lowered again and then so on and so forth and the piece would gradually get printed like this when you have pieces like that with an overhang it doesn't matter because there's powder below to support in order to prepare your piece best for sls you want to make it hollow and if you make it hollow the inside will still be filled with unfused powder and you want a way to for the powder to fall out of the piece so there's a few ways of doing this. One way I learned this one, I, I think I learned it straight from Matt Barnes tutorial. Is just use the shell, and then just click on a face that is not a functional face, and then select a thickness that is like let's say one point two, not too thin. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work. In this case, I'm not getting a good result with it okay and, and yeah this is what the piece would eventually look like what i want to do is create more holes for the piece to... and then punch a hole make it four or so and then what i can do is click on okay if i if you can't click click the tip of the corner one thing you can do is just roll back here to the very beginning of the actually you should just, you should click on construction axis first then click on the origin and then you click on the tip of the corner and then you make this longer than the tip of the corner let me just try 40 or maybe 60 yeah and that should be good then you right click roll to end Then for circular pattern, enter this to pattern, click on the command you just made. Okay, first you need it to be feature pattern, then you click on that command you just made to carve that one hole. Axis of pattern, click the axis that you've just created, and then you need to copy it three times, and you need to click reapply features. And there you have you have basically a corner with three holes in the same orientation as uh if you are familiar with some of the older generations of 3x3s three three, like uh, the fork and the mid, I'll, I'll roll back. Yeah, I'll roll back to extrude one. Roll it here. Click on the tip of the corner, click on the origin, and maybe another corner, and then create a plane. 
and then close to end. And then, okay, now that I have this plane, I can section view on the. Yeah, okay, I'll go to section view on this plane. And then I'll go to delete face. And then right in the middle, we notice where the corner stop is hollow. And click on this. These two faces. Okay, alternatively, I can just save this. Then I'm going to section view again from the opposite side. Since I saved that incomplete command, it's still an error, but I can now come in from this angle and click this side. So now I've selected all three sides of corner stock. And after saving the command, like it actually fills up the corner stock. So uh, this will be solid and it should be stronger. Yeah, this is just an extra note that I'm adding in during the editing process. I'm actually currently still filming the FDM part of this video, but one extra thing I want to say about SLS is that usually you are not the one doing the printing. Instead, because SLS printers are usually large industrial machines, you are going to upload your print onto the site of uh, SLS prints, like companies such as Sculptio or I don't know what others I can think of. You basically pay the company to print the puzzle for you, it's going to be much more expensive, plus the company charges in part counts, so I think there are some good videos by Matt Bonner or like, I don't know who else, but uh, they do have some advice on how you can stack the parts, plus you want your SRS printed piece to be one part, you don't want to split them because when you split, you're pre pretty much making more parts for the company to print. And the current method I use the most right now is FDM printing and how this works is we have hot plastic being squeezed through a nozzle and like the x y and z axis of the 3d printer sort of act like a hand to move this nozzle around and treat this nozzle like a pen basically writing with it at first writing a first layer in 2d and note that this is happening in open air it's not inside a bed of powder like the srs printing so once the first layer is written on the bed surface then the z axis will move up a little bit and then the next, the second layer will be sort of written down on top of the first one, and so on. And this is where a problem arises. This is in the air. There's nothing supporting it below. So how does this part stand? The answer is we actually print a structure below here, known as the support structure. Now you notice a temporary structure is being printed at the bottom of the T-shape. So that like we can print, we are able to print the top part basically. Uh, this needs to happen for any overhang bigger than 45 degrees in general, although I think some printers are more capable than others. But what this basically means is we are wasting a lot of plastic to print the support material and the surfaces that we rip the support material out of are not going to be perfect. They will have some residue left over sometimes. Uh, therefore, my approach to handling like, 3D printed parts is try to minimize support material. So what happens when you split the part in half is it is possible to orient this piece in a way that basically has almost no overhangs, such that when you slice, notice that the amount of support material I'm using is much less. Unfortunately, because this is the center piece and the middle area for the screw to enter, like it shows that I still need to print a little bit of support material but you notice that I use much less support material and none of the functional moving parts of the cube is really affected. Okay so back in on shape what I would probably do here is I'll create a plane maybe from these two and the origin and what, what you notice is that the plane actually cuts the pieces right in half that would be Okay, I would go with multi-surface split even though it's just one surface. Bodies to split. Actually this one also. Entities to split with this face. Okay, okay. half of a midge with no overhangs. Half of a wing with no overhang as well. 
because of this, it's actually very tempting to buy six colors of plastics and just print the whole thing stickerless. The corner, even though it's split into half, you can actually further split it into three because so. I'm just gonna make a sketch. And yeah, I'll just draw. I'll just draw a triangle, and make this angle forty-five degrees. And then do a cut extrude. So this is the triangle, remove. I'll make it symmetric and just make it 40. Mm, yeah, I need the I need the whole triangle. Okay. Yeah. So when I cut away 45 degrees from a different direction, notice I'm left with a one third of the corner piece. And even if you print it like that. Flat, the, the overhang that you see from this angle is actually less than 45 degrees and you can actually print one third of the whole corner piece without having to worry about support structures on this face. X centers and some of the middle pieces, like I show you some of the center pieces, I just find, I just find my own orientation to how I can print this with like minimal supports. So for this piece, for example, I will actually cut it like that in some of my newer puzzles. I know some of my yeah, my original Magnet Maglev 4x4 V1 was printed like that. I, d I didn't cut the piece in half, I just printed it from this angle and it went up like that and then there's a small bit of support material here but when you print it like this you notice that all these slants are 45 degrees so they don't really count as overhangs in that regard so you have, you have much less support material but the disadvantage of doing things like that is it has very little attachment to the print bed and there's a risk of this thing just detaching halfway during your prints and to prevent that from happening I just changed my method entirely and just cut the piece in half like that and then I glue the two halves together afterwards. Because 3D printing is nowhere as accurate as injection molding, what happens is that you can't exactly make the two halves, like one side have like the male half and the other side is the female half and fit them in and it's a temporary fitting where right? you can voluntarily pull them apart when you want and add magnets and push them back close, like how you do in a mass produced cube. I would say that cannot be done on a 3D printed one. So what we will do instead is usually we just leave this solid face here and you just glue the two halves together and if you really want a, a guide, uh, to like make sure you glue the two halves together as exactly as you can. One thing you can do is just punch a hole somewhere with sufficient height and sufficient depth. Make the hole two millimeters because uh, well, that depends on how big your three D print filament is. For me, I I use a one point seven five mm Creality filament. Basically, this hole has to be slightly bigger than the filament you use, and then you just punch the hole like that. Do a cut extrude. Of course, not so big as short distance would do. And if you want, you can use the chamfer tool, because when when you make when you cut a hole, you're basically making you're basically making a a, a negative cylinder into your puzzle. So you want to click on the very top of the cylinder, and chamfer it by like forty five degrees. Basically, chamfer is the chamfer is auto forty five degrees unless you change some settings. And then since it's two, I I want my distance to be half. And then when you print it like that, it's sort of it's not a it's not a cylinder anymore. It has a triangular roof which gets rid of overhangs. And once you do that, you can basically print the two halves. Uh, the 3D print software I show you is it is able to do like uh, mirror images on its own. Yeah, you can basically just put two copies of the same piece and mirror mirror the piece in your 3D print software itself. And another thing about FDM, since like you have seen me try to address this problem during the SLS portion in the video, is how do you hollow the parts? And the answer is just usually a 3D print slicer software can already like slice the parts for you. So for example here I can control the wall thickness and the wall line count and like I mean yeah the software will hollow the parts for you already. So for example when I slice this part here Let's show you the preview. It's actually printed hollow inside. Uh, there's some other material for added strength known as the infill. You can, like, usually such softwares give you a lot of options. You can customize how thick your infill is, how thick your top, top and bottom wall is, and you can use this to prioritize. Maybe for certain pieces that like centers and anchor in 
other pieces maybe you want a, a stronger like density like so that they don't break and those pieces that are just hanging on and not really su- doing a bit less to support other pieces maybe the external ones like wings and corners you might want to print them a little bit thinner just to take some weight off the cube uh, this one is your own discretion of course so yeah i hope this whole video can address some of the problems of uh, basically turning your 3D model into a real cube.